R News is brought to you by Alive. Believe in best. Tonight on R News, a 40-year-old man behind bars tonight after allegedly impregnating a minor. Plus, the National Security Minister on the defense over crime efforts. And later, police are back on school campuses. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina Dragovich. Topping news tonight, a man who allegedly impregnated a 14-year-old schoolgirl was yesterday sentenced to four years in prison as part of a plea deal. Jared Higgs tells us more about the case and why some members of the public think the sentence is too light. 40-year-old Justin Pratt pleaded guilty to five counts of unlawful sexual intercourse when he appeared before Supreme Court Justice Renee McKay. Police found the child at Pratt's home around 9 a.m. on January 14, 2020, after investigating a tip from an anonymous caller. The officers allegedly heard sexual noises coming from the apartment at Shamrock Close in the Carmichael Road area. You should get at least for, uh, for how old he is? He's 40 years old. 40 years old. Well, they should get at least 35 years. On gaining entrance, the officers met the child putting on her school uniform. They arrested Pratt, then alerted the juvenile's mother, who thought her daughter was at school. The child was taken to PMH, where doctors confirmed she was pregnant. The teen told police that she met Pratt on Facebook, that they had sex five times between June 2019 and January 2020. Yeah, I think four years. Mm -mm. No, I think that it should have been more stiff a penalty than that of four years. My God. Members of the public have expressed outrage at this sentence and other sentences for sex crimes that they deem too lenient. One unemployed woman says this four-year plea deal is an insult to the victim's family. When you think about that, think about it. if it's your child, how would you feel? What are you saying to the parents? Four years? Come on, I, I think it should be. We need to do something about um, the government. We need to do something with the type of punishment. It needs to suit the crime, and I feel four years, no. No, that's not right at all. I don't know how that could come to be, but I don't think it's good. Now, as far as the sentence part, I mean, it might need to come up with more stricter, stricter, you know, correction for them. But as far as that, I don't like it. Justin Pratt's prison sentence took effect from March 28th. Following his release from prison, Pratt will be on probation for three years. If he commits any crime during the probation period, Pratt will spend two years in prison. Cassie Bethel prosecuted and Ian Cargill represented Pratt. Reporting for our news, I'm Jared Higgs. In other news, the National Security Minister slamming the opposition over comments Free National Movement leader Michael Pintard made concerning crime. I'm skeptical about the opposition's sincerity in wanting to be bipartisan. Um, they're disingenuous in a lot of what they do. So you come to a meeting with proposals and you've not even been briefed as to what the problem is. That is like a doctor treating you without examining you. And so the Prime Minister may be of a different view, but I see their effort as cynical and disingenuous. On Monday, the FNM released its own suggested measures to fight crime. Pintard's recommendations included operational, administrative, and intersectoral measures for the short and medium term. Among immediate operational steps, Pintard recommended increasing police presence in hotspots, deploying intelligence officers in inner city communities, and extending the neighborhood watch program to over the hill communities. But Monroe was less than impressed. When you don't know, you come with prepackaged plans. Either you tried those plans in the past and they didn't work, or you didn't try them and you have to explain why you didn't try them. But I still, I'm not an optimist for them to be sincere in their approach, but I do hope that they will change course. One day after police were put back on nearly a dozen public school campuses across New Providence, the National Security Minister and education officials insist the move is vital. Jasmine Brown has the story. Officials confirming today that nine senior and junior high schools will now be manned by police officers and government high school is confirmed in that list as officials say they'll do all they can to keep campuses safe. 
The decision to place officers back in schools comes nearly a week after a male student was stabbed at AF Adderley Junior High School. The Education Minister and National Security Minister both made the case for reinstating officers on campuses. We are not going to sacrifice their future. Now the issue of safety is a compelling one and we have been be obliged, we must do something to stabilize the environment. One thing that everyone agrees to is that the police have a place in school. Government High is not the only public school with an officer now attached. Other senior high schools include R.M. Bailey, C.C. Sweeting, C.V. Bathel and Doris Johnson Senior High Schools. Police officers have also been reintroduced to a handful of junior high schools including C.H. Reeves, T.A. Thompson and A.F. Adderley. Hannah Martin says despite criticism in the past surrounding a school policing program that was introduced under the former Christie administration. She says there is now widespread support for the more recent move. We, we just need a collaborative effort of everybody in the community for us to do what we can to stabilize our young people. Last week, Bahamas Union of Teachers President Belinda Wilson told the Nassau Guardian she would support officers in schools as she said it would provide for another layer of protection for students and teachers. As for whether campus police officers will be armed, Monroe had this to say. How they choose to equip the police who go into the schools would be a function of their intelligence would be a function of what they need. Hannah Martin says while placing officers in some schools is an immediate fix, she says officials hope it will not have to be a permanent one. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Well, the Davis administration is enlisting the help of a retired Canadian corrections official to head a special committee. National Security Minister Wayne Monroe says the committee will look into the findings of a recently wrapped investigation at the, Baha the Bahamas Department of Corrections. No, it's not been appointed because it takes cabinet to appoint it. We're working out the details of how, when and how the persons from Corrections Canada, because we want, when we say independent, we want somebody who isn't connected to the Bahamas, who nobody can say has a horse in the race. And we recently signed a memorandum of understanding with Corrections Canada, and we're working out the basis upon which a retired correctional services officer will head that. Sunny skies and pleasant conditions in the capital today. Meteorologist Greg Thompson is in the Weather Center with the latest. Thanks, Christina, and welcome everybody for our first look at weather on this warm Tuesday evening. Temperatures in the upper 70s right now and the mostly clear skies. We do have some upper level clouds moving across the area. Winds are falling off east at 8 miles per hour and your feels like temperature very warm, 75 degrees. High pressure in charge of our weather, blue skies, dry air mass in place and that allow for temperatures to warm up into the 80s. Uh, we didn't really see much in terms of, we have some high level clouds moving across, but low level clouds were nil, and temperatures will continue to be pleasant for the rest of the evening. That's your first look at weather, your extended forecast is still to come. Still to come on our news, monetary relief on the way for Grand Bahama straw vendors. Plus, not so fast, what the culture minister has to say about Junkanoo subventions, and later, the honor bestowed on Sir Franklin Wilson by one Junkanoo group. Stay with us. Relief is on the way for Grand Bahama vendors, according to the island's minister. Our Sasha Lightborn has the story. I um, got an approval for, um, from Cabinet for an immediate relief for the vendors in Port Lucaya Marketplace that will be distributed sometime later this week. Um, but there is so much more that needs to be done. After a tour of the Port Lucaya Marketplace last week revealed the plight of vendors, Grand Bahama Minister Ginger Moxie says she jumped into action to seek approval for monetary relief to the tune of $177,000. Moxie says those funds will also go beyond the Port Lucaya Marketplace. We did it 
in Port Lucaya, but there are also the ones in the farmer's market downtown who have been um, impacted as well since Dorian. They're the, the, the fish fry vendors in Eight Mile Rock. They're also the vendors in uh, the harbor area. And so we are bringing relief to all. It's, it's actually $500. It's similar to what was done during the, the Christmas time. Um, and so we're doing that, um, and they should expect that this week. Now, according to the minister report, Lukaya has 127 vendors. There are 188 in the harbor, 10 at Eight Mile Rock Fish Fry, and another 20 at the Farmer's Market in downtown Freeport. Reporting for our news, I'm Sasha Lightborn. And it's too premature to say whether subventions for Junkanoo groups will increase for the upcoming parade season, according to Culture Minister Mario Boleg. Boleg yesterday confirming an Independence Day parade will take place. Moving forward, he says the economy will dictate how the government will assist. Uh, I still believe that uh, looking at the economy right now, we are trending in the right directions. Most of the major sponsors for Junkanoo are doing quite well. Uh, um, I believe that things, we still nine months away from John Canoe, so it, when we get to that bridge, we'll cross that bridge. But at this very present time, I don't see the need for us to have to make any new increase uh, for any uh, grants to the uh, John Canoe groups. Well, JCMP Chairman Dion Miller says the Junkanoo community is seeking to move away from the fierce competition between groups. Miller says that competition o often overshadows the overall intention of the event. We want to get away from where there's arguments over the results. We want to get away from those delays. We want to uh, you know, have a better experience for persons who pay their money to come and view those, um, those um, 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 parades. We want to include more Bahamian and, um, entertainers. Um, give, give a, you know, so many different things we can do. But there will always be that competitive side of John Canoe. We just don't want that to be our whole holistic focus um, for those parades. Miller added there is a need to provide a better product for fans. We were so dominated by competition and that it blinded us from expanding and from evolving with our experiences because we were only focused so much on the competitive aspect of it. COVID allowed us to not compete, not do John Canoe, so we had an opportunity to look at it holistically, put all that competition aside, which is kind of the positive and the negative aspect of the parade, and gave us a fresh eyes as, un as a unit, united, to see what we need to do to fix this parade, for, not only for ourselves, but for the generations that are coming on after us. It's now time for tonight's Financial Market Minute, brought to you by RF, your local investment bank. This has been your Financial Market Minute. To explore the best performing mutual funds in the Bahamas, visit our website at www.rfgroup.com. When our news comes back from the break, bridging the gap between businesses and the community, plus how UV is working to keep student athletes healthy. The details when our news returns. This is our news. Welcome back. The Grand Bahama Port Authority reaching out to the business community through a community expo. GBPA President Ian Poitier says more expos are on the horizon and GBPA Chairman Sarah St. George adds the initiative is just the beginning. What I'm hoping for is that persons are able to address every concern that they have concerning any type of functions, any services that we offer because there are misconceptions in regards to um, our responsibilities, etc. I think this is uh, the, the beginning 
of a whole series of interaction um, and uh, they won't all be expos but we're going to keep um, doing this, uh, get, getting into the community. The National Lead Institute launching a race to save our communities through moral reconnation therapy. Lead President and CEO Troy Clark says the Lead Institute is opening doors and building pathways from recovery to leadership. The greatest gift a country can give its citizens is the ability to dream and the tools to do so. When citizens dare to dream, their potential is unlimited. Social Services Minister Obi Wilshkum says the program has his ministry support as too many young men have lost their way. This has opposition leader. Marco City MP Michael Pintard says a greater sense of urgency is needed to save our communities. 20 murders in the month of March, 19 in the capital, one here in Grand Bahama. Young men picking up firearms. Our boys and girls continue in many instances to develop into men and women who have tremendous dysfunction. So in the race to save our communities, we must move faster to reach them at the point of infancy, at the point they're in preschool and primary school. So when they get in high school, that they are well adjusted. And Bahamian Buddy Heald putting up big numbers in a losing effort. And the University of the Bahamas looks to keep young student athletes healthy. Here's Marcellus Hall. All right, thanks, Christina. Welcome to our sports, everybody. I'm Marcellus Hall. Uh, to say it's been an up and down year for Buddy Heald uh, would be an understatement. Starting off with the Sacramento Kings, they struggled all year long. Then finally traded to the Indiana Pacers, where he has seen success with his minutes and scoring, but has seen the same fertility in losses. Last night, looking to pick up a win, last again, but turns out didn't go quite the way he wanted. Let's take a look. Buddy Heald and his Indiana Pacers at home as they faced off against the Atlanta Hawks. Pacers comfortably sitting in 13th place in the Eastern Conference. No danger of making the playoffs at all. Pretty much playing out the string. Last night, uh, it was the Hawks continuing to put what the Pacers have considered to be uh, more losses on them. 132 to 123, the final score as the Hawks win comfortably. As for Buddy, he fills up the stat sheets. Had a good night. Played 38 minutes, 26 points, four rebounds. So that's what five assists, a steal, and a block. Pretty good performance there for Buddy, like we said, in a losing cause. They are back in action later on this week as the season winds down. They'll play on Wednesday when they uh, host the Denver Nuggets. Doesn't get much easier. Nuggets, one of the top teams in the league. So it looks as if the Pacers have their work cut out as the season gets ready to close down, at least for the Pacers. Meanwhile, a big part of successful athletic program is healthy athletes. Part of maintaining healthy athletes is making sure they are strong in and out of season. As UB Athletics celebrates International Athletic Training Month, head athletics trainer Sasha Johnson explores a big part of the process, pre-participation physicals. Every year we do pre-participation physicals for all our athletes here at the University of the Bahamas. Um, and that is a medical clearance for the athlete. So if we have an athlete that may have sustained an injury, maybe prior to the season or over the summer, we're able to find out what that particular injury is, um, take the necessary um, steps to correct that injury, to treat the injury, so that they're 100% once the season uh, begins. And then we also kind of pick out red flags. You know, there are some athletes that, you know, have issues with hypertension, um, that may have um, other uh, medical in, um, issues that we need to take care of prior to them engaging in full sports. And there it is. You look at sports for you here on this Tuesday. I'm Marcellus Hall. Back to you, Christina. Thanks, Marcellus. Straight ahead, our Greg Thompson is back in the Weather Center. And later, a helping hand. Find out how meals for a thousand Lutherans was made possible. Stay with us.
Welcome back to our news. The Shell Saxon Superstar is naming Sir Franklin Wilson as an honorary member for the legendary Junkanoo group, part of a surprise 75th birthday celebration for Sir Franklin. Sir Franklin called it an honor. Gratitude. I mean, this is simply amazing. This is an unauthorized word stoppage. <laughs> Sir Franklin was also gifted a handcrafted treasure by legendary Junkanoor and the leader of the Saxons, Percy Vola Francis. Shell Bahamas and Sun Oil has contributed to the growth and the development of the Shell Saxon superstars for more than 30 years. So you can imagine the amount of money that was pumped into us and into the world of Junkanoor. And so today, we want to recognize him, especially for that. And partly sunny skies heading into the midweek. Greg is back in the Weather Center with a look ahead. Thanks again, Christine. Welcome back, everybody, for our second look at weather. That ridge of high pressure dominating our weather with dry air mass in place, lots of sunshine across the area. We do have some high-level clouds moving out of the Western Caribbean across Cuba and into the central and southeast Bahamas that will continue to trek towards the uh, east. But that ridge of high pressure will continue to slide out towards the east, turning our winds more easterly over the next couple of days. And eventually by Saturday, we see east to southeast flow. That will bring in some warmer temperatures. So we're looking at warm temperatures for the week and lots of blue skies. Boating forecast for the Northwest and Central Bahamas tonight to tomorrow. Small craft using caution. We're asking you out there. Northeast to east winds at 15 to 20 knots. Seas running four to six feet over the ocean. Your high tide will be at 653 tonight. For the Southeast Bahamas, an advisory in place for you guys down there. Stronger winds, northeasterly at 20 to 25 knots. Very rough seas at 5 to 8 feet over the open waters. Here's a look now at your family island weather and temperatures for tomorrow. A look now at your seven day forecast through next Tuesday. Not much change in our weather over the next couple of days. Warm temperatures will remain with us. Back to you, Christina. Thanks, Greg. As grocery store prices continue to rise, a local nonprofit is putting a smile on the face of a Lutheran. Bertha McDermott tells us more. We spent over $50,000 for the food, and all of that is from private donations to Hands for Hunger. With the goal to expand to family islands, Hands for Hunger provided food packages to 1,000 families in Eleuthera with a price tag of more than $50,000, according to Hands for Hunger Executive Director Keisha Ellis. Because we've been able to develop such good partnerships with local businesses in New Providence, we're fine, we find that we're able to stretch a dollar even further. The initiative comes as the price of food items continue to escalate given inflation in global markets. If the items were purchased locally, District Local Government Chairman Kenan Mackey says each box would have cost families just over $115. The box include items like fruits, fresh bread, eggs, rice, oats, cereal, sugar, flour, and a variety of canned goods and more. Hands for Hunger took its mobile community market to provide food to individuals as far north as Curran Island and Spanish Wells to Deep Creek in the south. Mackey said the initiative brought much joy to locals. This initiative um, opened up even my eyes even more to the need of the persons on my beautiful island. It was pretty exciting to actually be a superhero on, 
on Saturday pass. According to Ellis, this isn't the last for Eleuthera. She said the goal is to have a constant presence there. So that when people need food assistance, it's not a matter of us having to send boxes from New Providence, but actually having an established presence on the island where people can easily access us and our programming. Reporting for our news, I'm Berthony McDermott. Thanks, Berthony, and thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Christina Dragovich. We'll see you right back here tomorrow night. Have a beautiful evening, Bahamas.